So she is now anointing her little monsters with her own blood and semen and her perfume. Now, Crowley stated that the industrial use of semen would revolutionize society. Because ultimately in the OTR, everything came down to semen. And recently, we've come to understand that semen holds information, data. Actually, 37.5 gigabyte or megabyte held by a, a single firm. 37.5 megabyte. That's incredible. Like a hard drive. But actually, that means that with each ejaculation, we're talking about 1,500 gigabytes of data coming out of it. Thank you. 
the Illuminati and was struck down by the lightning. And they found on the courier uh, documents that were expressing a coming French Revolution, a revolution that hadn't yet occurred. But the Illuminati themselves, when they came together as an Enlightenment era society, were founded on the principles to oppose superstition, prejudice, religious influence over public life, the abuses of state power, to support women's education and gender equality. That was the message of the Illuminati. They were outlawed by other secret societies and the Bavarian government, and most especially by the Roman Catholic Church. Adam Weitkopf, the founder of the Illuminati, was actually a Jesuit. Now, the Jesuit is formerly known as the Society of Jesus. It's the largest single religious order of the Catholic Church. They were founded in 1534 by St. Ignatius Loyola, and he discovered his faith after being hit by a cannonball and having a miraculous event with the Virgin Mary. What he called Our Lady of the Way, or Our Lady of the Road. She was known as Madonna della Strada, and she is the patronage, patroness of the Society of Jesus. They were known as the Company of Jesus, or God's Marines, for their willingness to go anywhere in the world and fight in the name of the Pope. They organized under military lines and were widely viewed as a very manipulative force in the world. Their black popes, or father generals, were considered to be running the Vatican and running everything behind the scenes. And Ignatius Son Loyola said that that we may all be all together of the same mind and in conformity with the Church herself. If she has to find anything to be black, which appears to be white, we ought to, like answer, pronounce it black. For we must undoubtedly believe that the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ and the spirit of the Orthodox Church is governed by the same direction. So they would follow the Pope without any question. No. Would they follow this guy down any lane that he would he would ask them to go? The Jesuits were one that were were ready to go to war at any moment, any of the fighting. They were ready to go under any authority of Pope Benedict. Uh -huh. But now amid sex scandals and financial corruption, Pope Benedict shocked the world by resigning. No Pope has done this in 600 years. And one simple to the statement to the clergy, and it was over. He had just said, I'm done, and that's all it took for him. Now he was the first pontiff to, to go upon the Temple Mount. Uh, he was the first to come forward about the Illuminati and speak out and exonerate the Knights Templar for their obscene rituals and homosexuality. Oh. He had been digging around looking for a document that was going to expose the Illuminati, or so he said, and came forward and said with a document that exonerated the secret society. <laughs> this is great stuff, right? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> So now it is all the sex scandals, the pedophilia, the Catholic priests, uh, the financial scandals. This guy gets to just get off lucky. And he's managed to move himself into the, uh, the Vatican proper so that he cannot be charged by any of the crimes. I think I'm staring at <laughs> Curiously enough, when he quit St. Peter's Basilica was struck by lightning twice. And then he tried to release the dove, a bird of peace, and it was attacked by a bird of prayer. <laughs> True. <laughs> Our current Pope is actually a Jesuit. He's the first Jesuit Pope to come about. Now, it's a very curious time for a Jesuit Pope to be there. As
as Pope Benedict had already released the Knights Templar of all their wrongdoing. <laughs> that is, talking with like decapitated heads and homosexuality and obscene rituals that they were performing. And now we have a Jesuit Pope. This, this should really bring about an intriguing time. Now, he is said to be the last Pope, according to prophecies by Malachi. That this will be the very last Pope, and he will bring about the Antichrist. His seal, you can see, shows the eight pointed star, which goes to the goddess, the pineal gland, and of course the IHS, which is the motto of the Jesuits. Now, the Bible says that the Antichrist will come from the abyss, from the so deepest parts of hell. And the event is expressed through magic as the Quifot, the Quifot powers, or the fallen angels, Samuel, the Elzebub, or I guess he's not on the list, is he? Uh, we have Samuel, Lilith, uh, all the different fallen angels and their titles are considered to exist in this abyss. And this would be the very forces that these sorcerers are trying to invoke. The path of through the abyss on the tree of life is straight up through the middle. So down at the bottom you have ten, which is earth, or one, depending on which way you want to read it. And the middle pillar that goes up the straight path is the G pillar, or the camel. And maybe that might have something to do with the quote in the Bible about the camel making it through. Because there, as you see, in between six and one, is the abyss. This is known as the Ah, or the hidden Sephiroth in the Tree of Life. Now often the Tree of Life itself is used in mind control. This is a depiction that a mind control trauma-based victim had drawn from their memory of being in the, the occult rituals that were their trauma-based mind control. And you see in there the Tree of Life. It is like a trap. Now for them, this is like a map of the other dimension. And you can use this map to then know where you're going and by finding the different sigils and symbols inside, knowing the different aspects of each of the God forms, you can actually go through. But the thing is that to take you from heaven to, to or from earth to heaven, you have to go through the abyss to get there. This is actually the meaning of the Masonic G as far as I know. Now, this has come straight out to us in our popular culture again, and the production company that puts on the voice, known as Talpa, uses the Tree of Life as their corporate logo. So everybody's in there watching the voice, and they're not recognizing that at the end of the situation we have the Tree of Life. But if you'll notice, they have moved heaven into the abyss. Now the very symbol of the voice and the, the, the symbol that you see there with the peace sign is the symbol of Typhon, the, the, uh, the beast of the abyss. And the BB itself is a symbol of this very agent of these Klephot powers, or the powers inside of the abyss, are numbered by the number 66, or 66, which in Hebrew is B, so it becomes BB in Hebrew, so you've got VB as your 66, it's different than Roman, it's Hebrew. You'll notice that Village Roadshow Production uses six Bs as their corporate logo. And if you want to get deeper into that, you'll have to visit me at my table. Because I'd like to talk to you about how a girl could go from a little Disney star to this. And honestly, if you watch Britney's videos in chronological order, and you see her coming out as a Catholic schoolgirl, as Kathy O'Brien has talked about, and that her song is, you know, hit me one more time. And the ideas of mind control and mind transfer run through her videos to the point that she eventually ends up fighting her own clone lab and fighting men in black. Now, Dan Aykroyd actually was on the phone with Britney Spears one day, and as he was talking to her, the men in black appeared in front of him in a black limousine and then vanished again. You can see uh, Dan Aykroyd talk about this on FreemanTV.com. But Walt Disney World and Walt Disney Co. are at the heart of this uh, programming that's coming out and how you should be able to know that Disney is not safe for your family. Perhaps 
do think that the girls maybe just, uh, you know, broke down in the making of it, but no. As you go through each of the signs and symbols that have to go with this, you realize that Disney is at the heart of a Nazi fascist agenda to database and collect all the names, David, and everyone in there. And you use trauma-based mind control victims to, to put this stuff into your head. Uh, now, Brittany eventually, like Arizona Wilder, who was a member of the Mothers of Darkness, and she no longer wanted to go through her rituals, Arizona Wilder. So she dyed her hair brown because they want their goddesses blonde. And then when that didn't get her out of the ritual, she then shaved her head. Now you would notice when, Disney, when Brittany went into Esther's hair salon, she had brown hair. She asked Esther if she could shave her head. And Esther said, I'm not shaving your head. <laughs> You're Brittany Spears. She said, well, I'll do it myself. I don't want them plugging things into me anymore. I don't want them in my mind. And she grabbed the shears and she shaved her head all. As everyone looked on, filming and watching. Now, she then broke down and ended up in an institution. And at this institution, she then scrawled on her forehead, 666, and claimed, screaming, that she was the Antichrist. Now, Brittany is known to speak in many multiple personalities. There's the British Brittany, the weeping Brittany, and you have even the demonic Brittany that scared the living daylight out of her big bodyguard. He came out of Montana talking about it. Brittany scrawled 666 on her forehead, screaming she was the Antichrist, and they stuck her in a wig and put her back out on the stage. She was listening, trying to keep up with the program, but she just couldn't do it anymore. And I think they really then raised Lady Gaga to her, her amazing status as she is now. Brittany then went on to finally make it back into 